Hello, welcome to another image critique here on the Boudoir Guild. My name is Mike Lloyd, and I'm a professional boudoir photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I'm a certified PPA print comp judge, and I had the pleasure, the honor, the opportunity to judge competitions all over the United States, both in person and online. And the one thing I love most about photo competitions or image critiques, anything like that, is the opportunity to get live constructive feedback. I generally don't recommend entering contests online where you submit an image and rank percentage-wise out of a thousand or whatever, because your clients don't care about any of that. If it makes you feel cool, that's amazing, I support you. But getting the opportunity to have real live feedback given on your work is absolutely incredible. It's super valuable, and even if your images are not the ones being reviewed, you are gonna learn a ton about how to improve your craft. And if you'd like to have your own images reviewed here on the Boudoir Guild, you can email them to me, mike at boudoirguild.com, or join the Facebook group, because when I'm due for another batch of these videos, because I. I do batch them out. I will uh, put up a call in the Facebook group for everyone to submit their photos. So you can send them over to me there. Just keep them 3000 pixels on the longest edge and no watermarks, please. Also no nudity, because unfortunately I can't share that in the Facebook group or on YouTube. All right, let's dive into the first three images. Okay. Uh, I have not reviewed these images before, so I am seeing them for the first time as well as you. So for this image in particular, well, for any image, when we view a scene, whether it's in real life or it's a photo or video or whatever, our eyes go to the brightest thing first, the most contrast and the sharpest focus. So in this case up here, this window is super bright and there's tons of contrast and bright colors up there. That is where my eyes go first, but I know that this isn't a photo of a window, it's supposed to be a boudoir image. So then I can look around the scene and figure out, oh, there is a person there. That might sound strange, you're like, well obviously there's a person in the photo. But again, our brains go to the brightest point of an image first. So it's important that we expose our photos properly to make it as subconsciously easy for our viewers to navigate the image as possible. This is all a subconscious thing and it affects how people respond to our images. So if there's any kind of dissonance in the viewing process, people will just reject the image subconsciously and move on. And that's not what you want. You want them to love your images, to continue looking at them and then to throw money at you. Okay, so this area up here, way too bright, needs to get knocked down. Also, the horizon line is off. This this one bugs me probably more than anything else. If you see the slope of this windowsill, let me throw the grids on here so you can see it. Uh, this distance is not the same as this distance. There's, there's slope on here. Uh, it could be some wide angle distortion, but I don't think so. It's just tilted. She looks pretty level, but even the mattress is at that angle also. So keep your images level, even if there's no visible horizons in the image. A couple other things that I'm seeing, I don't know, the lights seem forced. Like they don't really add to the scene. They're kind of awkwardly placed. Same thing with the Santa hat. It almost just looks like she's wearing a regular beanie because you can't see the top of the hat. I wouldn't know it was a Santa hat unless, you know, thought about it with the lights and everything. But the rest of the scene has nothing to do with Christmas or the holidays. So it, it seems like there are elements added to it to give it some sort of stylistic feel, but they're they're out of place. And again, her, her face, super dark here compared to the rest of her. Um, just not that flattering a pose either. So I think there could be a lot of potential here, dropping the camera view a little bit lower, move it a little bit more to the side. So you're looking at her kind of from this angle to lengthen her out, bend the knees up a little bit more. There's a ton of work that can go into making this uh, a more polished image. But I, I think this is a good example of when adding elements to an image for the sake of creativity actually takes away from the image. So anything that is that is in the image or that you've chosen to withhold from the image impacts how the viewer reads it. I, I think this would have been a much stronger image without the awkward lights and the and the Santa hat. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so a couple things going on here. Firstly, 
Uh, the horizon line looks straight, so well done with that. And if we throw the grids on here, she's weighted proportionally throughout the image, meaning if we look at these intersections here, these intersections that, that divide the image, um, it is a little bottom heavy. And, and by that, I mean the amount of subject dispersed throughout the frame. There are aesthetic ways to do that. Uh, in this case, I'd want more space down here by her feet because we've got more space up here. Like get an equal amount of room on both of those. Also, you have the line of thirds right here that could go, that should go right through her eyes. So if we were to crop this, I'll show you what I mean. Bring that down to there. Now she's more evenly weighted, north and south we'll say, top and bottom. She is centered left and right, so we do have that, that going for us. This is also one of those awkward poses. Like I never recommend having somebody squat. Usually the only time when someone is squatting, they're going to the bathroom and that's not what we're photographing here. But this does a few things. One, the knees are aimed directly toward the camera. This causes foreshortening. We can't see the length of her legs. It makes her legs look really thick and really stubby and short, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was not the look that, that she wanted. I've yet to have a client that said, can you make me look shorter and stubbier? So never have the knees or the elbows, any of that pointed directly toward the camera, turn sideways so we can still see the length of the body. Also, when they're in that position, the legs are squished. The calves and the quads, the thighs, are squished together and it pushes them out. Again, making them look larger than they really are. Good use of hands here on the flower with the fingers sort of soft like that. I'd still wanna turn them a little bit more sideways. And when you're doing the hand on the face, it's really important to not actually touch the face because then you smush things. But instead have the hand just casually resting there and it looks like that's what's going on. So up here, peaceful, good. Uh, down here, everything is squished and smushed and stubby. So again, turn sideways, have her you know, on one knee and the other leg bent if you want, just something to keep from everything getting smushed and squatted or uh, squished and shortened there. All right, and then for our last one today, very different feel. Okay, so again, first thing that jumps out is the brightest point in the image. My eyes go right here, um, which boudoir image, that should be an appropriate place for your eyes to go. I love the mystery in this. The the way these jewels pop up here uh, are contrasting to the black hat, which is reflecting no light at all, which is cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging all of that. I'm not feeling the hand up here because we already have an accent piece in the jewels. We have the mystery on the face. All oh, that's fantastic. I think the hand takes away from all of that. I appreciate that it's out of focus. We have a shallow depth of field here but also the hand in relation to the size of the face. Our hands are generally the size of our face, but when we see a hand next to the face, it makes our hands look giant, like disproportionate, even though that's really what they look like. So when you have the hand even closer to the camera than the face, it makes the hand look even larger than it did in relation to the face from before. So in this scenario, the hand looks way bigger than her face face, which generally isn't flattering, but also it takes up a lot of real estate in the image right next to where we should be looking. So in this situation, it's taking away from the main subject matter, which is from the rim of the hat down to here. Uh, but I love the pose. I love the expression. The exposure is great. Uh, I like how none of the lines are going through cropping in inappropriate places. The light's great. Again, the pose is fantastic, but drop that arm out of there. Again, it's one of those scenarios where adding too many different accent pieces means that none of them are actually an accent and it just feels sort of chaotic. This image doesn't feel chaotic. Um, I'm sure she still loved the image, but that hand could definitely go. Uh, a couple other things. When I'm doing poses like this, I always like to have my clients breathe out through their mouth and they always make a duck face. Um, 
So if I notice them doing that, then I'll just have them part their lips or relax their jaw. And just a little bit of space between the lips can create a really sultry feel in an example like this. But that's, that's just a bonus tip. I think it's a stellar image otherwise. And again, I'm sure she absolutely loved this photo. I feel like there is clipping in the hat. I might wanna see a little more details. Same thing in the clothes. It's good contrast, but a little bit of detail showing up in all of this black would just take that image up one more level. So there you go. I hope you learned something from this photo critique. As you can see, uh, there's a lot that goes into taking a great photo. And oftentimes it's not about adding things, it's about removing things. I think that's our big takeaway from the images today. And again, I don't choose a theme, I just rando picked three of the images out of the, the 20 or so that got submitted for this review. Um, and they happen to sort of follow a theme there. But they're common mistakes that we make when we're learning. And once you get that sort of thing pointed out to you, you're never gonna not be able to see it, which is pretty cool. Cause now when you're posing your clients, you bring a hand up, you're like, that's cool, but it's not really necessary. Now, if you wanted to have that hand up, she could turn sideways where the hand isn't as visible, you know, and go like totally side on, that could be cool too. Um, but in this scenario, again, just because the hand is closer to the face, it changes the proportions. So lots of things to consider, but every little bit of progress you make is progress well deserved. So if you would love to have your own images critiqued here, I would love to see them. You can email me, mike at boudoirguild.com, and I will include them in our next round of critiques. Again, please send them with 3000 pixels on the longest edge, no watermarks and no nudity, please. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.